Your identity is not from the cell. Your identity came from the environment. When I was a child, I heard advice from many spiritual people. But as a child, I saw that their words never really matched their lives, so the value of that spiritual lesson never really applied in my life at all. In fact, I actually gravitated towards science because I saw that a truth in science is true on this side of the planet as it is true on the other side of the planet. So I saw more truth in going into the realm of science than entertaining the notion of spirituality. Well, as we end this particular lesson, I'd like to go back to our pyramid of science and said, look, we've talked about the established sciences so far, mathematics leading to physics, physics leading to chemistry, chemistry leading to biology, and the biology resulting in psychology. I now want to add a new floor to our building based on the quantum physics and epigenetic research, and that new floor that I want to add is called spirit spirituality. Spirituality, in my vision, has a scientific connection, and I'd like to describe it for you. Before we get into the understanding of the cell part, I want to go back to the nature of quantum physics, and we talked about the field in quantum physics. The energy in which we are immersed is really solely responsible for the structure of matter. So the field, according to Einstein, is the sole governing agency of matter. So what is the field? What we talked about is the invisible energy spectrum, but let me give another definition. The field represents invisible moving forces that influence the physical world. And I go, well, yeah, that's, that's a definition of the field. And I go, well, it's interesting because there's another word, spirit. And spirit has the exact same definition, invisible moving forces that influence the physical world. So in a sense, field and spirit can be equal to each other. Spirit representing an energy, a metaphysical version of it, an energy that influences our lives. And in quantum physics, the word field is a physical, not metaphysical energy that influences our lives. So spirit has a foundation in the fact that invisible forces are very important in unfolding the lives that we lead. Now, when I was understanding that, and I began to understand the nature of the cell membrane as the brain of the cell, at that instant in time, my whole life was rocked for a very important reason. And it was rocked based on this. What I got into when I saw that the membrane being the brain of the cell was controlling a cell, I also recognized an important fact, and that is this. There are no two biological entities that are exactly the same. And how can I say that? And the answer is simply this. If you take cells from your body and put it into any other human's body, your cells will be rejected as not self. And if anybody else's cells are put into your body, your immune system will eliminate those cells and reject them as not self. Well, there's a very important point in this, and that is cells have identity to them. Your identity is on your cells, and another person has a different identity on their cells. So I said, so where is the identity to be found in a cell? Well, I picked two cell types that are exactly the same. They could be, in this case, two liver cells, two muscle cells, two brain cells, two skin cells. I just wanted two cells that are exactly the same for the important reason is this. The cytoplasm of those cells are carrying out essentially the exact same function. So most of the cell is designed to carry out the function, in this case, liver function. But I also said there's something that says that cells can be different when they come from different people. So in this case, I have two liver cells, but one is from Bruce and the other is from Margaret. And I say, okay, what's the significance of that? And I say, well, if I take my liver cell, Bruce's liver cell, and stick it into Margaret's body, her immune system will reject it as not self. If Margaret's liver cell is put into my body, my immune system will reject it as not self. The point is our cells have an identity beyond the fact that they're liver cells. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the color from the image of everything where the cytoplasm is exactly the same with the idea of leaving behind the color of the image where two cells differ from each other in regard to identity. Now, I know the nuclei are not exactly the same, but as we talked about in an earlier lesson, I can remove the nucleus from the cell. So in this case, let's pretend I remove the nucleus. 
Now what I'm going to do is remove the color of everything that is the same between the two liver cells, leaving behind the differences which would relate to the identity of Bruce and Margaret. And as you remove the color, what do you see? The remaining color that's left uh, is represented by the membrane of the cell. There's something in the membrane that distinguishes our personal identity. And what it turns out, there are receptors, those proteins with antennas on them. There are a group of receptors that represent an identity. No two people have the same identity receptors in their cells. So each person is different. I say, well, what do you call these receptors? Well, science studies a few of them. And interestingly enough, what do they call these receptors that give identity? They call them self-receptors. Now, in our conventional materialistic science perception of the world based on matter, they look at the receptor population as being the source of where the difference comes from. Unfortunately, they're missing the point. Proteins respond to environmental signals. So I may have different receptors on my cells than you have in regard to self-receptors. It's not the receptor that's important. It's the signal from the environment that's picked up by the receptor, and that's the story we've been talking about. Receptors read environmental signals and then control the cell with those signals. Now what do we find? That two people are different from each other because no two people have the exact same set of self-receptors. And the self-receptors are so critical in medicine for this reason. If you want to transplant an organ from person A into recipient B, you just can't pick any person's organ and transplant it. You have to look at the self-receptors between the donor and the recipient. What's the point? To see how many of this population can match. The more matching of receptors between a donor and a receiver of the organ means that the receiver of that organ will not aggressively remove those cells with their immune system. That's called tissue matching. And this is why you just can't pick anybody's heart and put it in anybody else, but you can find a heart that matches as many receptors as it can on your cells, well then that heart would be a good fit for you. So basically, the self-receptors are specific for each individual, and they're located in the outer membrane of the cell. Now let's do a simple experiment. In this case, what I'm going to do is remove the self-receptors from my cell. Well, guess what? Without self-receptors on the cell, it's just a liver cell. It's a human liver cell. It can be transplanted into any human and never be rejected because all of us have livers. Now what I do, though, is I go to Margaret's cell remove her self-receptors from her cell, and transplant them onto my cell. And I said, well, what does that lead to? And the answer is very simply this. Once I transplant Margaret's receptors onto my cell, it's no longer my cell anymore. Because if I took that cell and put it back into my body from where it came, my immune system would reject it as not self. Interestingly, I can take my cell with her receptors on it, implant it into her body, and she will accept it as self. <gasps> I transferred ownership of the cells by transferring these receptors from one individual to cells of another individual. So what's the storyline leading us to? Well, look at it this way. Consider an analogy that a cell or a body is like a television set. And there are antennas on the television set. And when I turn on that television set, that's where we get that program that comes across. And then I say, well, where did the program come from? And some people might say, oh, the program came from the antenna, the receptor. I go, the program didn't come from the antenna. The program was picked up by the antenna. And it came from where? The environment. The signals that activate these self-receptors come from the environment. That's why the receptors are on the outside of the cell. So now I say, okay, instead of a television set, let's turn this into a cell. And I say, yeah, the cell has antennas on it. We call them receptors. And the receptors that we're specifically talking about are called self-receptors. And I say, yes, the self-receptors receive an environmental signal. And I say, what is that signal? What does it represent? And I say, what it really represents is this. It represents your identity. Your identity is some signal picked up in the environment and played through your antenna. Well, this becomes very important because it says this. You, as an identity, represent an energy field. 
In this case, energy field could also be called spirit because field and spirit share the same definition. So let's call it a spirit field. A spirit that is unique to you, a field that's unique to you, is picked up by a unique set of antennas on your cell. Relevance is this. Your identity is not from the cell. Your identity came from the environment. Hat dir dieses Video gefallen? Dann abonniere jetzt unbedingt diesen Kanal. Denn schon bald findest du hier den nächsten Beitrag von einem deiner Top-Mentoren. Thank you.